Hey everyone, my name is Malta and I'm a member of the technical steering committee for the AMP project and the tech lead for the team at Google that's contributing to AMP. Now, I want to recognize that there are worse problems in the world right now than JavaScript frameworks and web performance. I want to thank the protesters in the streets and unequivocally state that Black Lives Matter. In today's talk, I'll talk a little bit around the original thinking about AMP, how it evolved over time, and how we think it will develop in the future. Now, thinking back to like the summer of 2015, this post by The Wired, even though it's a little bit older, it was kind of capturing the sentiment at the time, like the web is dead, native is taking over. And also at this time, platforms like Facebook Instant Articles and Apple News were kind of coming up. And we were having all these conversations with publishers who were talking to us and were worried about the situation and wanted to find a solution that worked for them and worked for users and kind of made the web um, become um, viable for users again. And obviously for us at Google, this was also really important because we were extraordinarily successful on the web. And kind of out of this sentiment, um, the AM project was born with the vision of creating a strong user-first open web forever. Now we highlight user-first because it's really about rethinking how we can do things in a way that they really think about what the users want and make it right for them instead of, for example, putting a you know, pop-up ad in front of everyone. However, for it to stick around forever, it also must work for publishers and merchants because if their businesses aren't successful, you know, that website will just go away. Now, one good way, I think, to, to think about how we wanted AMP to be was to kind of think about web performance as this race, different race cars, right? And so certainly in 2015, I'm not sure this actually changed, was that the average mobile site you know, just wasn't doing quite uh, so well and was kind of there in the back of that race, right? And But we also realized that there wasn't actually, and this is really important, there was not a technology problem you could make a website with great UX, great performance, who was right there at the top, right? If you just hand tune it, if you were an expert. Now, our goal with AMP was to get up there in the front. We were not aiming to win against every hand tuned website in the world. We just wanted to be up there. And, and this is really important. We wanted everyone to be up there, right? All AMP documents. And um, this actually brings me to a point that I don't think is talked about enough, which is that web performance is biased, right? Roughly, the smaller a website is, the less well-funded it is, the slower it is. And I'm really, really proud that AMP does not have this bias. Very roughly, you know, obviously there's some variation, but like AMP documents have a quite uniform speed, even though there's huge diversity in how they look and how what their experience is. And, you know, I, I think it's, it's fair to say that this worked in terms of adoption. There's now tens of millions of websites using AMP, billions of pages. It's, you can't count them and you also, like, it doesn't matter, right? Like, it's, it's a very large number. So that's, that's kind of how, how we got started. And then, as it does, the internet got mad at us, right? And I actually want to acknowledge that, like, Many, you know, there's complaints and criticism of AMP, about AMP, and I actually personally agree with many of them. And we've taken that to heart and, and worked with them, right? I want to broadly summarize the, the known issues that AMP was facing as one of them being awkward URLs on, on Google. That was largely based uh, because of the iframe based viewer, which created that privacy preserving instant loading. And on the other hand, um, there was this feature called Top Stories Carousel on Google that relied on a deep AMP integration and thus was exclusive to AMP. And you know, if you didn't want to make an AMP page, you got sad, right? And I think that's, that's, that's really fair. So um, we've worked on these issues and, and today um, with the sign exchange technology um, in supported browsers, the, those awkward URLs are no longer a thing. And, and secondly, this was announced really recently and I'm gonna talk about this a little bit later in the talk with Google's page experience ranking announcement um, the exclusivity of AMP for the top score sale carousel is going away. Now, we worked on these issues, but we didn't stop there. Um, AMP started like so many open source projects uh, with this benevolent dictator model, which is awkward and weird, and I, apparently that was me. And it certainly doesn't represent all the constituencies of this like vast open source project with all these, all these stakeholders. And so we updated it to a modern open governance model 
largely actually inspired by, by Node.js, who I think was in the forefront of kind of rethinking how, how open source governance should work. Um, there's a technical steering committee and advisory committee and so forth. Um, the second thing we you know, were planning to do at the time was to bring this project, which is you know, formally as in copyright owned by Google, into our foundation. And so last fall, um, it was announced that the AMP project would join the incubation um, uh, phase to become a um, project of the OpenJS Foundation. And so today, I'm incredibly proud to announce that the AMP project has completed the incubation project and is joining the OpenJS Foundation as a growth project. Um, there's actually one more announcement which I'm, I'm extraordinarily happy about, just came in literally today. Um, we have a new member in the AMP Technical Steering Committee, Cassiana, um, who's representing Axios Media, which is one of the, um, you know, a, a very important um, publisher in the digital native space. And um, we're actually really happy to have her because um, so far on the steering committee, this is different from the advisory committee, obviously, uh, we did not have a representation from publishers uh, with platforms like Pinterest, Twitter, Microsoft, but like there was no publisher representation. This is really um, amazing to have her. Now, looking a little bit ahead, um, I think the mission of AMP continues to be more important than ever. Uh, we still see that bias of web performance being better for large sites as a whole for the web. And users also you know, continue to seek out the streamlined experiences that we find in walled gardens. Now, um, I, I touched on this a little bit earlier. I just want to talk really quick about that, what Google is calling um, page experience um, signals and ranking. So this is largely based on something called Core Web Vitals, which are three metrics, largest contentful paid, first input delay, and cumulative layout shift. Now, these are all metrics that went through the um, respective working groups in the W3C, um, representing loading, interactivity, visual stability of, of our websites. And kind of they're taken together and they're bundled with like other signals like mobile friendliness, safe browsing, HTTPS, I don't think they're as important because nowadays most websites actually kind of do okay on them. So it's really these metrics um, which are um, collected using a Chrome user experience report um, that drive um, these ranking factors, right? And it doesn't matter how a website is built, technology is not taken into account, it's just basically what is the user experiencing, that's what I'm counting. And so I would summarize that a little bit like this, you know, basically Google saying, hey, we prefer if you provide a good page experience, we literally do not care how you do it. And some devs will say, cool, I'll use X, my favorite framework, and, and they're happy. But we also know there's folks who are going to say, yeah, you know, but like some guidance would be nice. Um, and, you know, we want to make AMP to be, um, you know, the framework of their choice if, if they choose, right? And, and again, bring, give everyone the opportunity to be right there at the top of that web performance race. Um, we want to make AMP the most cost-effective and simplest solution for publishers to create great page experience. And we want to match or exceed the user experience that closed platforms provide and do that by default so that without major UX project for every, every single web publisher on the web. We want to unbiased great page experience. We want to provide good performance for every website. We want to provide good accessibility for every website. Overall, great user experience. And we want to achieve that while keeping the business goals of the website owners in mind because if they aren't successful, the websites aren't sticking around and that would not fulfill our mission. That is all I had today. Thank you very much. I'll be tweeting out a link to a blog post that has a bit of a longer version of AMP's history, um, but this was the 10-minute version. Thank you very much.